What's up guys, Jacob Owens here for the Buff Nerds and today I'm going to talk to you guys about the most affordable best 4K cameras. So in a lot of my messages, whether it's YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, people are always asking me which camera they should buy. And I get a lot of these questions, anything ranging from a low-end DSLR to a more expensive camera. Um, and usually it has to do with it involved with 4K cameras and which 4K camera they should buy. So these are in no particular order or ranking. I am just going to list off my favorite and what I think are some of the best, most affordable, as well as uh, three or four at the end that are under the thousand dollar price range so very affordable and cheap uh, for those looking for a much more affordable option so let's get into it first up is this Sony a7s mark II. now this camera comes in around twenty four hundred dollars I actually owned this camera for a while shot a lot of videos on it love the camera it's uh, a little older now I think it's been out a year or two but a uh, very good 4k camera it's got superb dynamic range, low noise, it's got useful log options like S-Log2, S-Log3. The image stabilization in it, especially paired when uh, with some more lenses like Sony lenses or Canon lenses that have image stabilization, that improves even more. Some of the cons about it, 120 frames, it does 120 frames, but in my opinion, it's not really usable. It's, it can get really grainy, it can get really fuzzy, it's not really that sharp. So 60 frames a second is kind of the highest that I would shoot with that. And it's a little bit on the pricier side at $2,400. That's out of the range for a lot of people. Um, but I had the camera for a while. I loved it. You can check out some of my videos. Uh, any videos that I shot with any of these pieces of gear, I'll link in the description below. So you can go check out those cameras and those videos I shot with those cameras. Next is the Sony a7R II. This is essentially the same camera, but built more for photography. It's great for photography, great for videography. So if you're looking for kind of an all-in-one camera to do both, I would recommend this camera over the Sony a7S II, which is primarily focused on video. So a lot of the same pros and cons of the Sony a7S II, they're basically brother and sister cameras. Uh, just the a7R II is more geared towards photography. So some recent news, uh, Sony just announced the Sony a7R Mark III. So I would imagine the Sony a7R II price uh, will drop if it hasn't dropped already. Uh, the Sony a7R III was just announced. It's essentially the same camera, just with some new um, improved features. I think more dynamic range, a little less noise, um, and some things like that. So again, super great camera, especially if you're looking to do both photos and videos. Um, love that camera as well. Next we have the GH5 which comes in around $1,800. I had the Panasonic GH4 for a long time. I shot a ton of videos on that camera. Um, it was a beast, it was a workhorse, and the GH5 is just an upgraded version of that with some newer and better features. Probably most notably the image stabilization that the GH5 has over the GH4. So if you're looking for an affordable 4K camera and a small form factor, the GH5 is a great option at around 1800 and the GH4 is still a great option if you're looking for essentially the same kind of camera but at a more affordable price. Again, I will link some of the videos that I shot with the GH4 below so you can check those out and see the quality of that camera. Next, we come back to Sony with the Sony Alpha A6500. That camera comes in around $1,400 and it is a very small form factor uh, 4K camera. It's got the S-Log gamma settings, great autofocus. It has the built-in five axis image stabilization. Um, some cons about it, the touch screen's a bit slow, no headphone jack, um, but really not too much. And other than that, it's, it's really small. It's not probably intended for big production use. Um, it's more for, you know the affordable 4k camera for people trying to really get into video production or who need a small camera to travel and make different like travel films and videos and document things like that but a very great affordable 4k camera if you're looking for something that small and can really pack a punch next up we have the baby sister of the 6500 which is the 6300 this comes in under a thousand dollars so this is a very affordable camera. It's the predecessor to the 6500. So the 6500 is essentially kind of the same camera with some boistered up features. So if you're looking for 
a very affordable, small, lightweight, portable, uh, great on the go 4K camera, the 6300 is a great starting option. It's small, it's compact, it's got great dynamic range and detail, low noise. Um, some of the cons, it's, it's known to overheat. It's not practical in the professional videography world, um, but it is great for travel and on the go videos. Next, we come to Nikon. Now, Nikon isn't my favorite, but I had to throw this camera in there because it is um, a more affordable 4K DSLR. The Nikon D500 comes in at around $1,700. It's got great autofocus, it's got good 4K crop factor, um, some downsides are no focus peaking, it's a little pricey for an APS-C DSLR, and I'm generally not a fan of Nikon in general. I think Canon is much better for videos. Um, their color science for video production um, and detail when coloring in post, in my opinion, is better, so I'm not a fan of Nikon for video for that reasons, but it is an affordable 4K camera at just around $1,700. And next we have my personal favorite, the Canon 1DX Mark II. I personally own the Canon 1DX Mark II, so I'm a little biased, but that's also because it's just an absolute beast. Now this camera is by far the most expensive camera on this list, but for good reason. Uh, this camera is a very um, high-end professional 4K camera in the sense of a DSLR. It's um, got a great size to it. It's a little heavy, but I find that to actually be much better for keeping stable shots. Um, it shoots up to 120 frames a second in 1080, but that 1080 at 120 frames a second looks like 4K because the detail is so sharp. There's a lot of cameras when you shoot at 1080 or 720 in a higher frame rate, the image loses a lot of quality and looks a little muddier compared to their 4K image. Um, the Canon 1DX holds that 120 frames a second detail really, really well. And of course, I'm a big fan of Canon's color. It shoots 4K up to 60 frames a second, 30 frames a second, 24 frames a second. Uh, the battery life on it is tremendous. Um, it shoots 14 frames a second when uh, in picture burst mode. Sounds like a machine gun. The thing is a beast overall. By far my favorite, but it comes in at a whopping like $6,000. But if you're looking for the ultimate all-in-one DSLR camera on the go, travel, professional, photos, videos, that's the camera for you. So if you have the money to blow on it, I recommend you do it and you won't regret it. I promise you. That's kind of the, the top list for me of the affordable 4K cameras in the smaller form factor. There are bigger 4K cameras out there that are more video film camera like, um, but they are also more expensive. So I guys, I kind of wanted to bring you guys a list of more affordable, small form factor 4K cameras that you guys could potentially get or buy. But real quickly, I want to list like three or four cameras under $1,000 that are good 4K alternatives if you can't afford any of those cameras that I just mentioned before. Then we have the Panasonic FZ300. Then we have the Panasonic G7. And then we have the Panasonic FZ80. So you notice Panasonic's in there a lot. I think Panasonic has done a great job at creating affordable 4K cameras for the consumer. Um, they've done a great job with the GH4 and GH5 that I've personally shot with and loved. But yeah, guys, if you want to check out all these cameras in more detail, check the description below. I'm going to link each camera um, so you can click on the camera, go see how much it costs, what are the specs of the camera, and just kind of check them out further in detail. Hope you guys enjoyed my list. Hope this helps for anyone who's considering buying a 4K camera. Appreciate you guys for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Check out all my videos. I'm Jacob Owens for the Buff Nerds, and I'm out.